Dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. So, this course is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Parma, Professor Suspita Narayana and Professor Devaprata Das from IIM Mumbai. In the last two lectures, we discussed about the case study. So, what was the case study? It was basically related to where should I locate my distribution centers. So, one particular pharma company was planning to expand its region. So, they were thinking that they have total 811 customers in the new region. Who are the customers will be served from which DC? How many DCs should I have so that my responsiveness is maximized and cost of managing the DCs as well as transportation cost is minimized. So, that was the brief about the case study. So, in the last two lectures we discussed that and we found out that using k means clustering algorithm we can get some idea about where the DC should be located, how many DCs are optimum, which customers should be mapped to which DC and so on. So, what we will do in this particular lecture we will see how that model can be developed using python. So, we have not only discussed the technique, we will also see how you can redo it on your own. So, we will share the data set with you, you can practice and see how you can get the same output like us. So, as a first step what we have to do, we have to import the data. Okay. So, how do I import the data? Like previous classes, previous python uh, hands on class we have seen we need to import a library called panda. Okay. So, what is pandas? It is data manipulation and analysis library. So, we are importing that and importing it as pd. So, panda is imported as pd then I am creating a data frame df. So, how do I create this data frame? From this data customer location dot csv. So, if you see the right hand side, so I have 811 rows and 3 columns. Okay. So, if you look into the serial number 1 to serial number 811, I have column 2 latitude, column 3 longitude. So, for all 811 customers, I have latitude and longitude. I also have the serial number with me. Serial number 1 means customer log, customer 1, serial number 2 represents customer 2, serial number 3 represents customer 3 and so on. So, if I write this command and run the python code, I will get this csv file imported and it will be saved as data frame df. Okay. So, this is my df data frame. Now, once I get this data frame, since I have only two columns latitude and longitude, I can easily print that, I can get a graphical view. So, that is what we have done here. We have plotted the data points. Okay. So, we have latitude, longitude. So, all this 811 customers latitude and longitude are being plotted over here. So, how to get this plot? Because if I plot the data, it is always good for the visualization purpose. I can see how they are dispersed, how close they are, which customers are close to which customers. So, therefore, if you can plot it, it is always good idea to plot. Since we have only two variable, I can easily plot. If I have three, I can make a 3D plot, but beyond three, the plot will not be possible. But if you get an opportunity to plot, you 
ideally should plot so that you can visualize the whole data set. You can see how they are dispersed, how close they are and so on. So, how to plot the data? So, first I am importing a library called NumPy okay, and importing it as NP. So, what is NumPy library? It is numerical python mathematical and logical operations library. So, all mathematical and logical operations can be done using this library. Then I am importing another library called matplot library from their pyplot and I am importing it as plt. Then I am importing another library called c1 and, and it is imported as sn. So, what is matplot library? Matplot library is a plotting library for the python programming language. So, I also have c1, c1 is another data visualization library based on matplotlib. It provides a high level interface for drawing attractive and informative statistical graphics. If I want a very good uh, high level interface for attractive graphs, then c1 will be useful. So, in this case, since I need to plot clusters, various colors, then I need to put centroids on top of it. So, therefore, I thought C1 is a better library. So, now then SN dot implot. Okay. So, within SN, I am calling implot, then is x axis is latitude, y axis is longitude, data is df. So, what is df? This data. The, which I am calling. So, that data I am taking it over here, feet regression line false. So, I am, I am not interested to fit a regression line that is not purpose, height equal to 4 that means size of the graph. So, you can if you increase to 5, 6, 7 your graph will be enlarged okay? depending upon how big graph you want, how big figure you want you have to increase this value or decrease this value. Then plot title customers location. So, customers location is plot title, then plot dot show means the plot will be shown. So, if you run this towards the end we will also show you using Google Colab that if you run this you will get this output. So, the data df has been plotted like this. Okay. Now, I definitely know that this customer and this customer cannot be club together is that because they are far away, but I know that these two should be club together. So, if I have a visualization it is always good to get some good insights from here. Now, I am slowly slowly going into the clustering technique. So, I need to select the feature I may have three column serial number, latitude and longitude but I do not need serial number, serial number does not make any sense, I do not need it. Serial number 1 can be written as serial number 811, serial number 2 can be written as 3 and so it does not matter. So, therefore, I do not want serial number in my process. When I create the cluster, serial number column is of no use. So, therefore, I am removing that column completely and I am creating a new data frame. So, this is my old data frame df. Now, I am creating a new underscore df. So, in new df, I have only latitude and longitude. You see, I do not have any serial number over here. So, I will work with this new data frame. This is very important step because when you work with real life data, you will see that there are many columns which are of no use for you, you do not want them to be used during clustering process. So, therefore, why should I keep it? I will just remove them, I will keep only those columns which I want for clustering purpose. So, that this step will help you to do that. Okay? Now, next step is very important because in k means I need to find out the value of k. So, what is the optimum value of k? As we have seen in the previous class, there is a diagram called elbow diagram. 
So, how do you get this elbow diagram? Okay. So, it has to be very easy to plot it. So, what we are doing? We are writing few steps of Python coding and we will get this diagram. So, let us understand this. So, first we are importing matplot library from their pyplot as plt. Then from sklearn, sklearn library we have introduced earlier also when we talked about disease entry and random forest. So, sklearn also has clustering technique. Within that we are importing k means. So, clustering there could be k means hierarchical clustering, but we are interested with for k means. So, we are importing k means from sklearn. Then since I want to see like if I increase the number of cluster, how my sum of squared error is changing. So, what is the formula of sum of square error? So, x is observation, mu is centroid. So, from each observation to the centroid, I am finding out the deviation. Then I am taking the square of the deviation and summation. Okay. So, let us say x i. So, i equal to 1 to n. So, this is my sum of squared error. Okay. So, this is my sum of squared error. So, the y axis is this value. So, I want to find out if I change my number of clusters from 1 to 10, or in this case we have plotted from 1 to 9. So, then how my sum of square error changes? So, I am putting cluster range, range 1 comma 10. So, it will start from 1 and then go up to 10, but in Python it will go up to till 9 because Python starts with 0. Okay. So, therefore, I will get 9 clusters. If I want to have 10 cluster, I will change from 1 to 11. If I want to have 11 cluster in x axis, I will put 12 and so on. Then I am creating cluster underscore error. I am creating a empty dictionary. Okay. So, now what we are doing? Cluster error is nothing but sum of square error. So, this is nothing but sum of square error. So, this empty right now it is an empty array it will be filled up if I change the number of clusters. So, now a for loop is starting. So, this is very important. So, for number of cluster in cluster range. So, number of so this line is a for loop. So, first it will run for 1 if number of cluster is 1 then clusters k means number of cluster. So, the value will be 1 here, 1 cluster. Then I will fit the cluster, k means cluster. Then I will plot cluster errors dot append cluster inertia. So, what I will do? So, if number of cluster is 1, then I will get this value, this is the error, cluster error. Okay. So, cluster error is 70. So, for 1, cluster error is 70. So, cluster error is 70. Now, if I have, if I run it for 2, let us say. Now, the because I, my for loop is running from 1 to 10. Now, next time number of cluster is 2. So, I will have around, my error will be around 30, let us say 33. So, let, again I increase it to 3, because the range will go till 10 that means in python it will go till 9 i will go if i get 3 is around 25 so for 1 the error is 70 for 2 error is 33 for 3 error is 25 then if i make it four number of clusters it will be around 17 let us say if i have five number of cluster it will reduce to let us say 13 and so on. So, if I keep on increasing the cluster from 1 to 9 in this case, then for each cluster I will have 
sum of squared error. So, that error will be stored and will be stored in a dictionary. So, first I am storing it and then for again 6 I will have some value for 7, 8, 9. For each of these observation I will have some error value. So, then I am plotting this. So, first I am storing this in this array of data set and then I am plotting it. Okay. So, plot dot figure, figure size 6 comma 4 as per your choice you can increase or decrease this value then the figure will increase or decrease. Then I am plotting cluster range you see cluster range is 1 to 9 cluster errors these are my cluster errors these are my cluster errors and then marker is O. So, you can see 0. So, 0 is one type of marker. So, there are various markers available in python if I want to have star let us say you want this as this you want this to be printed as star then you can change the marker accordingly. If I want this to be printed as upper arrow lower arrow there are lot of markers available in python you can search it and put the marker as per your choice. So, cluster, cluster range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for each cluster value I will get a cluster error. So, that is what being printed. Okay. So, what is the title? Title of this plot is elbow diagram, elbow diagram x axis number of clusters y axis sum of square error sum of square error. So, this plot is printed. So, in this case I have plotted only from 1 to 9 clusters, but after 9 I can see that uh, decrease is very slow. So, therefore, there is no point of printing that, but you can actually print it. So, this is basically an elbow diagram and as you have discussed in the last class is a very very important diagram to find out what are the optimum number of clusters. Definitely one is not optimum because from 1 to 2 I can see a huge reduction in sum of square error. Reduction in sum of square error means my responsiveness will increase significantly if I am talking about this particular case study. Now, 2 to 3 again sum of square error is reduced significantly, 3 to 4 not that significantly, but it has a good amount of reduction happened, then 4 to 5 this much reduction, 5 to 6 the reduction is very slow, very low. So, since the reduction is very low after 4, so we can treat this point as optimum number of cluster. So, k equal to 4 and here the elbow is also breaking. So, therefore, this diagram is named after elbow diagram because at k equal to 4 the elbow is breaking and we can decide what is the optimum number of clusters. So, this diagram need to be printed first and it will give you an hint that how many clusters are optimum. So, from this diagram I found out that k equal to 4 is optimum. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will now form cluster because I know 4 clusters are optimum. So, I am now forming cluster. So, from sklearn library the cluster again I am taking cluster then importing k means clustering technique. So, clusters underscore new equal to k means within bracket 4 this is important. Since elbow diagram suggested 4 is an optimum, I am putting 4. If it would have been suggested me 3 is optimum, you should have put 3, 5, 6, whatever number of clusters you want to print, you have to put this value over here. So, I will get 4 clusters. Okay. Clusters underscore new dot fit. So, I am fitting which data set? New underscore df. If you see this is my this data up to this up to this two was my new underscore df is that it I will new underscore df had only latitude longitude data set latitude and longitude. Now I am fitting that data 
and I want 4 clusters. So, after you run this algorithm, you will get 4 clusters. Okay. I will get one column called cluster, but I have to store it. Where should I store it? I am storing it column location number 2. So, this is column location 0, this is column location 1, this is column location 2 column. So, in python it starts with 0, so this is 0th column, 1 column, second column. So, column location 2 I want, the column is cluster id, the name of the column is cluster id, value is clusters underscore new dot label. So, cluster labels are the value. So, for 0th customer it is part of cluster id 0, for customer 1 it is part of cluster id 2 that is it is part of second cluster, this customer is part of third cluster, this customer is part of first cluster and so on. So, for each customers like this customer is part of one customer, one cluster. So, after doing this you will see for uh, that means each customer will be allocated to one cluster. Since I have four cluster all the 811 observation will be mapped to either one of these four clusters and this mapping is happening over here. Now, once you map it I want to print it also. So, how can I print? So, this is how the printed output will look like, but how can I get this output? I am plotting the clusters. Okay. So, import C1 again I am importing C1 because I want an interesting graph like different color for different cluster. So, cluster 0 the color is blue, cluster 1 color is orange, cluster 2 color is green, cluster 3 color is red. So, I want that each cluster to be printed in different color. So, that easily I can uh, differentiate which customer is part of which clusters. So, that is how the C1 library will be useful. Then SN dot implode x latitude, y axis longitude, the data I am taking nu underscore df, h u e equal to cluster id. So, that means the color will change based on the cluster id regression model I do not want to fit height equal to 4. If I want enlarged picture I will get 5, 6, 7 whatever help. So, now these are plotted. Okay. So, we can plot this output. So, these are my cluster output, cluster output, cluster output in terms of image. Okay. Now, once you get this output, I know which customers are part of which clusters, but I do not know where is the centroid, where is the possible location of DC. So, for that I have to write another line of code which will tell me for cluster 0 this is my centroid 27.68, 80.90. For cluster 1, 27.42, 81.15. This is my centroid. Similarly, for cluster 2, 27.31, 80.83 is my centroid. Similarly, for cluster 3, these are my centroid. So, how do I get it? So, for that there is a code center is equal to np, np is numpy dot array clusters underscore new. I already had this from here. I am calling clusters underscore centers underscore. So, if I write this code, I will get the centers of each of this cluster. Since python starts with 0, so I am getting cluster 0, 1, 2, 3, but I have 4 cluster. Cluster 1 is dependent 0 cluster 2 is represented as 1, cluster 3 is represented as 2, cluster 4 is represented as 3 and these are my centroid. Okay. So, now I got the centroid of the clusters, but it is difficult for me where it is. So, is there any way that I can plot this? So, these centroids 
can I plot the centroid on top of the cluster output? Yes, you can. So, for that we have to write another set of code import I am importing C1 then I am importing implot x equal latitude y equal to longitude data data new underscore df hu cluster id same thing as earlier what new we are doing here we are plotting a scatter diagram centers 0 centers 1 marker equal to x so that means the centroid will be marked as x okay these are my centroid okay and how do i find out what is this location based on this centers 0 and 1 that means the first column of the array this is my first column this is my second column. So, 0 means first column, 1 means second column. So, if I focus on cluster 0 that is blue cluster, the centroid is 27. So, this point is, so this particular point is 27.68. I am writing only 2 digit after decimal and 80.90. So, this is my point 27.68 and 80.90. Similarly, for cluster 2, cluster 2 is basically orange cluster. Orange cluster is this one and what is this location? This point is 27.42 comma 81.15. So, can you tell what is this cent what is this centroid? So, this is centroid of 3 and this point is centroid of 2. So, accordingly you can find out. So, if you want I can write it down also for green 2 this is the point 27.31 27.31 comma 80.83. So, this point will be 27.56 comma 80.57. So, that is how I can plot it on the plot itself. So, it is very easier for me that these points are the possible location of DC and this DC will be serving these customers, this DC will be serving green customer, this DC will be serving blue uh, red customers this DC will be serving blue customers. Okay. So, that is how we can actually plot clusters and on top of it we can superimpose the centroid also. So, now what we will do in last 2 3 minutes we will go to the Google Colab and log in using Google account if you, you all of you must have a Google account log in into this website then upload the file customer location dot csv which will be shared with you then run the python code and uh, get the same output. So, we will do the hands on now. So, first let us go to the google collab ok. So, I have already stored the data customer location dot csv ok in the Google Colab. So, if you run this you will see and all already you have explore, explained this coding in the PPT format. So, this is basically storing and reading the data. So, you will get the data of all 811 customers serial number latitude longitude. Then I am plotting the data. So, using matplot and seaborn library I can plot this data if you run this code you will get this plot latitude, longitude, customers locations. Then we have to select the feature. If you see here I have only I have 3 columns serial number, latitude, longitude, but serial number is of no use for me. I only need latitude and longitude uh, for my clustering purpose. 
So I am only keeping latitude and longitude. So new underscore df. So new data frame is created in which I have latitude and longitude. We are determining the number of clusters. So to find out the number of clusters, we need to plot elbow diagram. And as explained in the PPT, we are plotting the elbow diagram. So if you run that part of the code, you will see the elbow diagram is formed. And as 4 seems to be optimum because this is where the elbow is breaking, we are taking the value of 4 over here, k means n4. So, 4 number of clusters will be formed. For each customer, you can see cluster ID is given. So, once we run this code, you will see that for each customer, one cluster ID is mapped. We are plotting this data set with the cluster ID. So, for each customer, one cluster ID and based on the cluster ID, the color is changed. Okay. So, now once we get these clusters, you want to print on top of it the centroid also. So, if you run this part of the code, again we have already explained the code in the PPT. So, please refer the PPT for the explanation purpose, you will get an output like this. So, this is where uh, the k means clustering is done. So, thank you. Looking forward to interacting with you in the next class. Have a nice day.